Welcome to the Create Today podcast. This show is all about how you can create the life you want one day at a time. I'm your host, Karen Stanley, and my beautiful guest is Elsa Morgan. She is a business success coach and an author of a best-selling book called Unstoppable, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you so much for taking the time and energy to be here and, and share with our listeners how to become unstoppable, and we're going to talk about all the stops that tried to stop you in your life. <laughs> Thank you so much, Karen, uh, for having me here. I'm truly honored. And yes, um, I definitely have a story and uh, I can't wait to share it with your with your listeners. Me too. Thank you. So let's start at the very, very, very beginning. You were born in Argentina? I was, yes. I was, yeah, I was born in Argentina um, and I was born into poverty. I had two dining chairs as my bed for the first 18 months of my life. And I remember um, mum telling me the first time that I heard that it was a bit of a shock because I, I didn't know that uh, until probably maybe in my 30s. Um, but I remember her telling me that and I remember her telling me that we would all, our bedroom was just one room. And so my my two chairs were in one little corner and then there was mum and dad's bed like squeezed up so I wouldn't fall over and I was up against a wall. And then there was my brother's bed and we we're all in in one room. And um, and so that was my start in life. Wow. And, um, and again, as you mentioned at the top of the show, that could have been something that, that could have stopped me um, is having that um I suppose being born into that, I could have actually stayed there. Yeah, absolutely. But you didn't. No, no, I didn't. And I have my father to thank for that because he decided to migrate to Australia and he he took a bet himself and, and took that risk to migrate to Australia. Everybody thought he was crazy. Uh, his family thought he, you know, he was crazy. And how would you operate in Australia? Like you don't know the language, there's kangaroos all over the place and, and all that. So all of these stories, but no, he, um, we came, uh, I was 18 months old at the time and it was one suitcase and $50 in his pocket. And the very next day he got a job in, in a factory. And, and that started that whole process of breaking, you know, that generational curse. So from certainly from his from his lineage, right? That's he took that chance and he started to to change things for the family forever. And uh, so I have my father to thank for that. And he's he's always taught my brother and I that you're better off taking the chance and learn the lesson than you know not do it at all. And that's always been uh, in my philosophy. I've carried that throughout my entire life. That's so good. Um, kind of the same thing. I had a friend who would say. I'd rather, would you rather regret something you didn't do or regret something that you did? And 999 times out of a thousand, when you don't, once you don't do something, you don't take that risk. You're going to think about it for the rest of your life. What 100%. if, what yeah. if, what if I would have? <laughs> so it's better to just do it and fail and learn and learn the lessons from it. It's, it's so smart. I wonder what was it? Do you ever figure out what was it about him that gave him that wisdom? or that drive, or that desire? I don't know. I've never really sat down and asked him. I've just always known that that's how my father has been throughout his life. He's always been someone that, even though he is someone that thinks through decisions, but when he makes it, it's done. Whether that whether people agree to it or not, is he, he doesn't care about that. But once, once he's made up his mind, he does it. And he, he does it based on what what he wants to achieve and so to some degree I've, I've carried that although I make the decisions based on where I want to be right like in terms of five ten years time so my decision making process is a little bit more um, future thinking I may not necessarily know all the steps but I go there but certainly that behavior has been passed down to me I love it how did you get there if you only had fifty dollars I don't, so what happened was they they sold up everything and also his boss at the time said whatever you can um raise and save up I'll match and yeah. I don't know I don't know whether um again I did I haven't actually asked but 
Uh, I don't know necessarily whether my parents paid for the flights or whether that's part of you migrating to Australia at that time. Of course, things have changed now, but at that time, Australia was looking for people to come in. They needed some um, unskilled migrants to come in. And, and I would presume that potentially that could have been part of the, you know, the offer kind of to, to entice people to come in. You remember specifically learning English when you get there as a baby yeah. and they're obviously not speaking English. Do you remember the first time you heard English and you started learning it or your parents learning it? No, not me, not myself particularly. I know my brother said that he had to learn a different language and that was a little bit foreign for him because he's six years older than myself. And so he was already almost eight. And so he had to learn that. My parents had to learn that as well. And, but you know what? The, the government at the time provided the resources for, for everybody that, uh, that came in to be able to learn uh, English as a second language. So it was, yeah, honestly, it, I, I look at that, that decision now and there's so much of a ripple effect with making those kinds of decisions. You don't see what that means going forward. But all you just have to do is just take that step. And much like what you said, would you rather make the decision and learn from it or regret or think, you know, not and, and regret not making the decision? Because he would have always been thinking about what would it have been like, because things would never have changed where he was. So right. it was either like accept the, accept the circumstances and forever be in the same place or take the risk and make the change. So um, and. Yeah, it's it's changed us forever. I certainly probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> In fact, I could probably say 100% I wouldn't be here if he didn't make that decision. Right. Wow. Was school in general, was it easy for you? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Uh, I loved it, although we moved around a fair bit. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's been part of my programming that I've had to work on is the whole, you know, because I had a little bit of a disjointed uh, childhood in that regard. And I think that's partly because my parents are trying to find their feet, like where did they want to live and how did they want to live? Because this was all foreign to them. So there were several moves very early on in my life. And that, of course, affected me as a child and, and the ability to form friendships with with everyone else but but that has also served me because I was able to learn and love to be by myself and so that's that helped to formulate a different behavior that I wouldn't have been able to operate from if I didn't have that experience so you know rather than feeling like I needed to be part of something to to move I, uh, from, because of my childhood, I just learned how to operate by myself and move on my own. Mm. Do you think that's an important part of, you know, success in general or building a business or creating what you want to create? 100%. Because, right. because, and the main reason why is because people will always have an opinion about you and what you do, regardless of what you do. So you, you may as well do it. And so when you start accepting that what you want to do is just 100% your responsibility, that you don't need to have other people's permission or you, need, you don't need to be part of something. In fact, whenever I tried to fit in, I really didn't feel like myself because it just wasn't my vibe. And oftentimes it was just feeling like I needed to be a, a part of something, but it was never truly me. When I stepped out on my own and owned myself and just worked on my own that's when I felt naturally by myself but more importantly the, the the greater that you you build your business the smaller your circle becomes because not everyone will truly understand what you see and so your job is not to convince people to see what you see your job is to really um st like build on the belief of what you see and sometimes that's going to require you to walk alone and on a path that no one else is prepared to walk. But you've got to be 100% okay with that. If you truly believe in what your mission is, then you're just going to step forward, even if it's one step at a time. I love that. Um, what made you want to study marketing? I really didn't know what else to do. 
and I, I, that's the honest truth. I thought it would be a good job. No, yeah, I just, I just looked at you know all the careers, and ideally, I wanted to be a journalist, but I didn't quite get the results that I wanted to be a journalist. So I looked at what was available at university, and I'm going, well, I may as well do that. This sounds pretty cool, and so I did that for most of it. But in the final year, I'd done 12 months in my third year with a company and it was great, but I saw sales. I saw the sales reps and they were going out and visiting clients and in cars and, you know, they get to do events and networking. And I thought, that's what I want to do. So so I had the intention of completing my final year, but when I got to my final year and with four subjects to go, I just, it was like laboring. I just couldn't see myself finishing off the year. And I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to cut my losses and follow with what I really want to do. And that's when I leapt into a sales career. And I, and I had a successful sales career for over 20 years before Working I just started right? uh, the online space. Working for yeah. companies. What companies did yeah. you work for? Did you sell? Predominantly transport and travel. Hmm. So throughout, and it was like 10 years each of, of both of those professions. And my the highest that I'd gone to was where I was a, a national product manager for DHL. Most people would know DHL. Uh, oh, yeah. Logistics company. So I was a national product manager for one of their um, mail products um, here in Australia, looking after Australia, New Zealand. And so I had my own team and I also uh, supported all the other teams as well from a national product basis and train up people on the product as well as having, um, you know, P&L responsibility so so for me it 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 was it was great I mean the position is great and having that authority and uh, presenting to senior management etc but I just didn't have the time and then the thing that I found with sales eventually was I mean I had programming that I had to work on that I didn't realize that I I had until I I entered on entre the entrepreneurial space but I always felt like I would hit a ceiling and then the goalposts will change. Like they'll increase the budget or they'll, you know, remove this piece and that piece. And then you're just going, well, how am I meant to work at like, you know, and, um, and I just felt that that was just constant. And of course, being a female in a male dominated area in, in transport, it was either really immersing yourself uh, into networking and, and, and traveling quite a fair bit and sacrificing a lot of potential personal time and, and building a relationship. And I just didn't see the payoff. I, I, I couldn't reconcile with spending all my time in a career that wasn't really serving me, even though it, uh, great, great companies and I, I love what I did, but I didn't really love it. Yeah. And and then it was a like, maybe on an unconscious level, I put it out there uh, about what else, what else, what else. And it wasn't until way later down the track uh, into my 40s that I discovered my mission. Before you talk about your mission, um, dying to know, let's talk about programming since you brought it up. You yeah. said you had to get some work out some of the programming because I talk a lot about this with my clients is most people aren't even aware of the programming. When did you realize you had some programming that you were, and then, and then tell us what you mean by that. So, okay, so programming for me is when you identify that you are in the same situation over and over again. Previously, I would point outwardly and go, Karen's to blame, you know, so-and-so is to blame or the economy. The, the prime minister you know so so you're not aware that the circumstances that you find yourself in are 100 your responsibility and but you will always find yourself in similar situations whether you're short of money and not making you know uh how, how do, what's that what's that phrase um having more month than money is yeah. that right yeah okay or um, or month at the end of the money yeah that's it and uh or you're constantly in arguments with other people or constantly breaking down things or jumping from job to job which I went through that period as well right um just things like that's just behavioral patterns 
that you're constantly um, carrying, but you're not aware. And more importantly, especially if you're lashing out all the time, where you're feeling like you constantly need to defend yourself because you have an opinion. And that was me for a very, very, very long time. And I just, one, I had the belief that there was something wrong with me, but I didn't know what that was exactly. And secondly, I thought I was a bad person because that's all I kept hearing. But little did I know is because it was because of me constantly lashing out. Um, I actually put up a post today, Karen, you should read it. And it, and I actually talked about this thing, right, my, my transition and how I likened myself like I was a dog that was ready to bark and bite. Mm. Right. It's a really good analogy. Yeah. And that was me for a very long time. And it really wasn't until 2020 when I discovered, and I can't quite remember exactly when, that, you know, like um, Taylor Swift says, you know, like, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. Uh, that's when I realized, wow, like, I am the one that is causing this reality. It's, it's, it's no one else. <laughs> it's me. So, um, so from around mid-2020, I started having that awareness. And I, I can't quite pinpoint when, although if I do sit down and reflect, I will get there one day. But um, And then towards the back end of 2020, I dabbled in a couple of modalities to help me understand where some of my trauma came from. But it wasn't until 2021 that I, di I did a deep dive immersion into it. And that just has totally changed my life completely. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so you're now taking totally responsibility for your life. And how is it that you started your business? So I've been in the online space since 2015. And full transparency, in 2015, I wasn't looking for something online. I was actually wanting to lose weight. And my girlfriend had been talking about a product and I tried it all. I'd, I'd run marathons. And I'd been a running coach and I'm thinking, hello, I can totally lose this baby weight, but I couldn't lose it all. There was like five kilos left. And she talked about these shakes and I just said, you know what, I'm going to try it, but not expecting it to work because I, I tried it all, all the things that I knew just weren't working for that last bit, but it did work. Um, and, it, and it wasn't, it was a network marketing company. I didn't know what that was at the time. I opted in, it lost, lost all that weight. My husband became ripped. And, uh, and then we had people asking how I'd done it. So that's how I got exposed into the online space because I didn't know anything about posting on social media, building a business online, having our conversations. And that really transitioned me yeah, into it. And then I started developing, uh, creating success and earning trips, et cetera. And fast forward to... Uh, 2019 I got tapped on the shoulder by a coaching company to help them to coach clients that were wanting to achieve uh, six figures and beyond and so I didn't see myself as a coach but I was so honored that they saw that in me so I borrowed their belief opted, opted in did that and discovered that that was my gift because my clients were all achieving the results very similar to what I was, not in terms of the amount, but they, they were experiencing the shifts and the breakthroughs that I had. And so that's when I realized that maybe that I had something. And then I started hearing it from other people saying, you know, you're good at this, like you should do your own thing. But I really didn't believe in myself. And then I started seeing it more so in women over 40, right, which is who I, I am. Same. And a, a friend of mine said, you can totally do this. You should, you should totally do this. And so it wasn't until my healer uh, dropped that nugget as well. And I just went, well, I keep hearing the same thing from different people. Maybe there's something in that. And so in 2021, during the pandemic, I launched my coaching business. That's fantastic. Let's talk about some of the things that tried to stop you in business. What are the challenges that you had that you didn't let them stop you? Um, when I did launch my coaching business, I was up until that point, I had been um, 
given the opportunity to speak on stage um, for another company and for their event, et cetera. And at the time that I launched, because, you know, <clears throat> they saw potentially there might be a conflict of interest, I was mm. pretty much within half an hour of me announcing, I was um, given the, well, you are no longer required. Um, your services are no longer required message. And okay. that was my first, yeah. <laughs> That's wild. That was my first, half hour yeah. later? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like I'd been celebrating. I launched my company. I announced, I announced it on social media and then I got that. And I, that was my first real exposure to, well, like things will come out of left field and they can, they can either stop you or fuel you. Right. And uh, at that time, I'd already started the healing process and I recognized and of course I, I you know I cried and I was upset and you know it, it it took me a couple of days to really process it but then I realized that this mission was greater than me and I could you know make it all about me or I could use it as an opportunity to showcase to other people that uh, a lot of people make decisions based on things that you know their their circumstances their situation and um but you don't have to carry that you just have to remain so firm in your belief that what you're doing is meant for you and what you want to achieve that regardless of what comes your way it's all in in aid of you like it's serving you at some point you're going to realize that and at that time you won't but you will and so I just hang, I just hung on to that belief that this was all happening for a reason. Oh my gosh. So good. So your clients right now, do they, are most of them crystal clear on their mission or do they need your help with that? Some are clear and some are not. And that's purely because again, uh, it's either because of belief systems that they've held on to that could this really be what I'm meant to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, or it could be because no one's really articulated it that way for them, that what they're doing is serving and, and being of service, and that is their mission to serve their, you know, their community. But a lot of people just come into the online space because I serve not only people in the direct sales space, but also coaches, consultants, professional women. So it's just a cross a cross section mm -hmm. of um, of clients. And so for those that are building businesses, regardless, regardless of what what that is, some of them really don't make the connection of business to mission until they start uh, peeling back the layers mm -hmm. and getting to know who they really are. And tapping into their heart and that, and understanding that this was more than just wanting to make an extra five hundred dollars a month or you know wanting to have a, a business work from home, it was about something greater that called them to show up. And through their growth, they realized that this was what they're meant to do in this in their lifetime. That's fantastic. And you help people if they're not clear. You help them get the clarity. Yeah, Would you say absolutely. most of your clients have some type of limiting belief around money? Yes. Is that your hundred percent? Sorry, Karen. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I mean, is that really your niche? I mean, so tell us about your mission. Is that so what my, it is? Yeah. My mission is to serve women over 40 who are building businesses or are in their you know, professional career need accountability. And all women have some sort of relationship with money. And it's it's largely stemming from programming that I think we're getting out of that right now because, you know, in the 80s and 90s, we started to see women forge careers and it was okay to see a woman having a career. Mm -hmm. But certainly from my parents' um, era, you know, it was the the woman had to stay at home and look after the children. And I think there was this expectation that women just wouldn't have careers or have any form of relationship with money because it was the man's the man's role, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way that it was back then. But in this day and age, they're, they're, you know, most women want to have their own money. What that looks like to them is, is irrelevant. But it's because there's still this, I suppose, society thing 
that why why would why do you want to build your own business when you could just stay home and look after the kids like why do you want to have more money like money is bad so because there's like external influence and a noise uh, some women feel a little bit unsure whether they should be speaking out that they want some more some more money or uh, is it a bad thing to want to have your own business mm. right so when they come into my that. world and they're not getting they're telling me that they're not getting the results mm. a lot of the time is because they don't believe they're worthy of them to, to actually achieve those results to earn that income and uh, and that's the the reprogramming that we start working on that you know it's okay that's exactly what I work with my clients about too. I mean, a lot of them, if they're coming to about to, they're single and they don't want to be, and they want to attract the one, um, they yeah. have built so many beliefs about relationships and about themselves and about men. And um, so you, you're talking about, you're talking my language. You got to reprogram it. I love it. Yeah. And I've had to do that myself, Karen. So, because I filed for bankruptcy in 2009 after the GFC. I did too. I had a horrible relationship with money. I mean, prior to that, I was that person, you know, the Gucci bags and, you know, like I was that person, Karen, right? And like I had to, I had to have the things to feel good about myself, thinking that that was what life was about, right? I mean, I look at that and I go, you know, she served a purpose, right? <laughs> but um, I learned a lot. I had the same exact thing in 2009. Yeah. And I had the Acura and the house and the, all of the stupid stuff. Yeah. And um, I had to work through all of that stuff too, because we had, we, I was, it was the same. I, I'm, nobody works outside of the home in our tradition, in my family. Yes. And uh, it's generally frowned upon. And um, yeah, I, I, I liked my career. But I always felt guilty. I always felt like I was a terrible mom and I'm making a huge mistake and you know I'm ruining my kids. And so all of those limiting beliefs you have to you have to process through, you have to work through and you have to reprogram. So I, I love that you're talking about reprogramming. It's so important. Yeah. And you know what the great thing is? And I, I talk about uh this with my husband a lot because we're both on the same mission, right? Is that what people don't realize is that the power is in your hands. Once you understand that you can be totally free from this anger, this, you know, worry, this, um, the things that you tell yourself, you can be free from that, that once you start understanding why you have those limiting beliefs or why certain things trigger you and you start getting to work, you start understanding who you really are and that how you've been operating has been on this filter because it's it's almost like this protection thing, right? And the gap between who you who you really want to become or what you really want to achieve and where you are is removing this bit. And once you understand that you have the control to do that, that you can actually do that, you it's it's like this massive aha moment going, oh my goodness, like I just thought that's how I was. And and it you know, it's, it's not like that. And when I had that realization, I, I just, I, I, the very first thing, because it was a mentor that brought it to my attention, I broke down and cried because I said, so I'm not a bad person. That was the very first thing. And I was just crying because I'd held on to that belief for so long because I was always pointing out and always lashing out and having arguments. That was what I kept hearing back. So, mm. um, so it was just really freeing from that perspective to accept that I, I wasn't a bad person, that I was literally just, you know, operating off, um, you know, stuff. And yeah, it, and it does take work fun. and it does take time, but it's freeing. Yeah, so good. So good. Okay, so how to become unstoppable. So we're, we're on step one. We got to reprogram your limiting current beliefs that are negative and keeping you back, right? Yes. And then you said you had a coach that really helped you. Let's talk about the accountability piece, how important that is to have someone in your circle that's going to be your accountability partner. How important that is and how do you find, how, how does one you know, identify if somebody's going to be a great person to have in their corner and help them pursue their dreams? 
So what I look for myself, and I and I actually coach this to my clients as well, for when they're looking for uh, coaches or mentors or even an accountability partner, but more so coaches and mentors, it's number one is that they've achieved the results that they want to achieve. And, and the reason why that's important is because they've already experienced the things that you're going to experience that you don't know about right now. And so having that almost like GPS, someone standing at the end of where you like the destination or where you want to go and you're in the car following the route and, and so your mentor can see where you are and they will already know what you're going to be going through. And so when you hit that speed bump, the mentor or coach will say to you, hey, listen, this is all very normal. You, you know, you haven't, you haven't rerouted or you haven't, you know, deviated off the path. You're actually on the path because you've, you've had this speed bump. So the key thing is, is that you just go over the speed bump and you just keep going. Right. So for me, I, that's the first thing that I look for. And number two is having systems that work because I'm someone that operates off systems. And so for me, having systems that I can just pick up and go, okay, I know how to do that and just implement helps me to just process because that's how I process information. And so I, I say to uh, my coaching clients, if you can follow systems, and sometimes the system won't, won't you know, the steps won't, won't necessarily generate the same result, but it's actually in the application where you start learning and growing and having breakthrough moments. And you might get a result in time. The key thing is that you just do the work to achieve the result, to not to trust in the process that if it's worked for one, it'll work for another. And, and that's what I look for. So it, those are the two key things more than anything is I look, have they achieved what I want to achieve? Um, do they have a system that I can pick up and implement to achieve that result? And then probably a third one is also values. I, I couldn't see myself aligning myself with someone whose value system didn't align with mine. That's, you know, integrity is a very big thing for me. So the value system has to be in alignment as well. That's so cool. You brought that up because I use that to help my clients identify. Sometimes maybe they're not aware. Have you found that some people may not be that in touch or really that aware of the, the values that are most important to them? 100%. And that's, that's because, yeah, yeah. And that, I, I think that's because Karen, because, because of the programming, yeah. because they're, they're a lot of the women that I deal with, they, they place value on external, yeah. which is what I used to do as well. So I valued other people's opinions. So I carried their values, which I, and I unconsciously didn't align with because it wasn't really me, but I just thought, well, I mean, that's what they're saying. So must be true, right? Mm-hmm. Must be true. And then when you start, you know, re- re- um, releasing the layers and then you go, uh, no, I'm, that's not, I'm not happy about that. And then you start identifying the things that really matter to you. So for me, integrity is number one. Like you can be all the jazz and everything. But if that's not in alignment with me, I won't work with you or I won't invest in you because I've got to work with someone that is in alignment with me because otherwise I'm inviting that in and I'm very particular about that. But prior to me doing the work of on myself, I, because I thought I was the problem, I just thought, well, obviously I need to fix this and they're telling me it's this. So I'm just going to go with that because I didn't have enough belief in myself and I just thought I was the problem. So I was operating off a very different filter and making decisions that weren't really in my best interest. And so I wasn't achieving, you know, all the results that I wanted to, even though I had results, but I sometimes didn't keep the results because I wasn't that developed. And so it's, it's, it's amazing how you truly identify who you are, like who you really are at the core, core of you from values to, you know, what's, what really lights you up and joy. Like I couldn't even identify with the word joy once upon a time. I used to look at it and cringe and go, right. Cause it, I just didn't understand how important that was when you are serving and how you need to love everybody. 
and 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 hold space for them and, and love them no matter what that was all foreign to me and and it's only when I peel back the layers I, I truly understood what I wanted and what was important to me to live by yeah just just getting that awareness in yourself what is actually important and what does that mean that's how you will actually identify what you want to do what's important and help you you know keep the path and stay on the path just keep moving forward like you say one foot in front of the other um, then you'll find all the people that uh, that will align with all those values. That's what I found. You know, you're really clear about it. That's who you're going to attract. And if you're not clear about it, you're going to attract all the rest Wish of wash. it. Yes. Yes. Wish wash. Yes. Wish wash. I'm going to steal all of your phrases. You could be all that jazz. I'm stealing that forever. And then we say riff rap. You say wish wash. That's hilarious. <laughs> I knew yeah, it. like, and I say go messy. Like, I have a hashtag go messy, and I just say that to everybody. Just go messy, and that's just been my philosophy with building businesses or even achieving any goal for that matter. It's just go messy. This waiting to be, to be perfect, uh, you're literally setting yourself up for just staying where you are. You will there'll be no growth but when you go messy you learn that's the quickest way <laughs> like and it's the cheapest way to use when you like oh, I mean not, not attaching money to it but it like if you really want to uh, learn quickest and cheapest, that's it just execute with not no, not needing to know everything gosh it's so true that's how you learn that's such great advice go messy okay I'm stealing that one as well but I won't I won't steal it I'll just share it yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Go get it out there. And then that's how you learn. It's yep. such great advice. I love it. Who are the they's? You said they, every, they were telling me I was the problem. Who, who, who is this, these they's? Oh, like you're like, I you're think just everybody, like it was like family, family, yeah, it was like family, uh, people that were, you know, in my environment that I allowed in, into my environment. And, and so, and that's a key theme is, you know, environment is, is key, but of course, because I placed external validation uh, as way up there, like a value system, which is like now totally opposite. Um, I, I believed them. I believed all of them. And I remember my brother, you know, bless him. I do love him. But at the beginning of my, uh, you know, my journey of, of being in the online space, I, you know, I, I toyed with the, uh, the, the idea of being a, a millionaire. And, um, and so I spoke that out, started speaking that out. And of course, my brother caught on to that. And he would make so much fun of me in front of family gatherings. And he'd always say to me, so, so are you a millionaire yet? So are you a millionaire yet? So are you a millionaire yet? And it would just bother me so much. And I remember this one time I thought to myself, I'm so going to prove you wrong. Like you would not believe, right? But because he was poking fun of me and, uh, and you know, making fun of my dreams, I questioned myself and I thought, well, maybe I am being, you know, outrageous. Of course, now I'm a genius, right? <laughs> but back then I, I, it, um, it held weight. But now I just, because I know who, what I really want, I don't listen to that riffraff, that noise, because... And I keep my tight, my circle really, really tight because I fully understand how important it is to surround yourself with people that are on the same frequency, same vibration, same mission as you, and that you quickly need to eliminate anything other than that, because that will have a massive impact on your energy, on your focus, on, you know, it'll be a distraction. It's an energy leak. It's a money leak. There are so many things that people are not aware of when you invite anyone that could potentially be like a cancer or, you know, toxicity. It's really you're inviting uh, that to have a ripple effect in all areas of your life. So I stamp it out straight away. 100%. What would you say to people that have a hard time with doing that? But that's my best friend for 24 years, or that's my dad, or that's my cousin, or you know, what? how do you help people that have a hard time um, distancing themselves from people that like your brother, you know, you can't just yeah. divorce your brother. He's making no. fun of your dreams. <laughs> How do you help people that are having a hard time with that? So I, I, I pretty much share what I did. And I say to them, there's gonna, you've got to come to a decision 
And this is, you, you will never ever make the changes that you need to until you make the decision, by the way, because until you decide that you are going to pursue this thing, you will always succumb to that noise. You'll always settle for whatever it is because you'll go, oh, I don't want to, you know, disrupt the apple cart or I don't want to upset my father and it's okay. Like it's, it's not really that important. So you'll just diminish yourself and diminish your dreams just to make them feel good. When you decide that you're going to do this no matter what, suddenly you, you have this like almost superpower that you don't even realize that you have that you will start, you don't cut them off, but you just go, I hear you, but I don't choose to listen to you. And you, so you don't, so like take that in anymore and you just it literally is like this invisible wall that bounces their message back to them right and and so I say to them I say to my coaching clients you've really got to make a decision whether you are going to be prepared to live life on their terms or do you want to live life on your terms because when you're you know on the hospital bed or in your last moments in life what do you want to say to yourself how you operated from right now the decisions that you made and how you moved, what would you want to say to yourself about allowing other people to dictate your life or how you could have taken chances that you didn't? And so that gets them thinking because what people don't realize is that every decision matters. Every day matters. And when you allow one thing to just, you know, to come into play and you, and you give it the allowance, even though it's not what you want, that has a ripple effect that you don't know of right now. And you cannot, if you're on a mission to serve on a massive scale, every single decision matters. It has a ripple effect. And when I really emphasize that with my clients, that if you settle for one, you're going to, that's got, that behavior is going to settle in the way you approach your business. It's going to settle with, you know, whether you, you have a snack when you shouldn't be snacking if you're going for a weight goal. Those kinds of behaviors will translate in all areas. So you can't say that you're consistent in your business and then you're allowing other people to talk your dreams down. You can't be, you can't be both. You're either one or the other. Yeah. And so when they realize that maybe they have been diligent in their business, but in other areas of their life, not so consistent and, and including that external noise, that's when they start realizing that they have to make a decision, whether that's half a decision or, you know, deciding to not visit family as much and just maybe seeing them every now and again, or maybe not picking up the phone every single time and calling them back when they've finished their, you know, um, their work and maybe cutting that conversation shorter, maybe distancing, distancing themselves from friends that don't necessarily agree with what they're doing because, what those people are going to realize in time is that it wasn't really about you um, doing something that was foreign for them. It was, it was something that you wanted to do and they'll be proud of you and they'll think of you as a genius, like what's happened to me. But, um, and there's going to be like, um, how can I say, like uh, there might be some friction, like you might upset people by making that decision but you've got to be so steadfast in your vision and where you want to go that you're going to do it anyway, regardless of whether they have your approval or not. And one, one day, whenever that is, they will tell you that they're, they're proud of you, but don't seek that validation. Just know that it's going to happen. And so it, it is a bit of a, um, like a big decision for my clients if they ever, ever get there, because some of them really struggle with that self-worth to be able to be strong enough to make that decision. But they know that in order for them to move forward and to not be so distracted and, know, and, and not so disconnected with where they want to go, they have to make those decisions. They have to either decide to settle for what they have or go for what they want. So true. I would just add, I completely agree with you and I love this subject. Um, some people will never tell you you did a great job. Some people yes. will jealous exactly. of you and envious of you until yeah. they die. It has nothing to do yes. with you. you. It, that's right. It's everything, everything to do with them. That's right. All of it. Right. <laughs> so again, it doesn't matter. Like you said, you said, seeking that outside validation, you will never feel good. 
ever no. anyway. So it's never going to fill you up. Like even yeah. like Gucci bags, like they don't feel good for a moment. And then it's like, okay, I still don't feel happy. What else is there? So it's, it's always going to be a what else until you get to who you are. It's a fill up. Nothing, you know, I have a, my uh, mentor, Marissa Peer, she says, okay, so everybody who has a shitty dad, you know, just as an example, and he never said he's proud of you or he's never there or he left when you were little and you just, you know, you have all these problems because you have a fatherless household or an abusive father. Okay. So as an adult, let's just say, let's, let's say, just imagine your dad comes to your house and spends the entire day, 24 hours following you around saying, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, you're so beautiful. And just nonstop. How long could you actually handle that? Like. <laughs> Two minutes. I'd be like, all right, all right. <laughs> it's That's- like, okay, I get it, right? So, and so you really think about that. You go, oh, it's not the outside out validation ever, no matter no. who it's from. That's not actually going to make you feel your cup full. No. And, but I love that analogy. And I love that, you know, just prove it to them. And how you said, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna prove you wrong. Like silently, you're in your brain like a ninja. Like I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> someday (laughs) just wait I can't wait yeah and even if that your brother or your dad or anybody else in your family anybody you ever know even if they never say it even if they hate you forever and they're so jealous because they won't ever have the the thing whatever it is that you created success or health or you know your joy uh amazing relationship whatever you've created that they they don't have that's all them and that's exactly what you're saying. I, I love that. Um, yeah. I want to, I want you to tell us about your book. That's a best freaking seller. Tell <laughs> us a little bit about that and how that came about. So, um, so this was the one that you saw is unstoppable volume two. Uh-huh. I have an unstoppable, volume. both of them, uh, bestsellers. And so the first one was number one in 28 categories, and volume two was number one in 20 categories. And they are both book collaborations that I, I published under my, um, my company has coaching program events and um, book collaborations. And the reason why I do that is because it's part of my vision to uh, uh, amplify women's messages, like to empower them to step into their message and go out and share it to the world. Because a lot of women don't believe that they have a message to inspire, but they do. And so this book collaboration is, is, and both of them are about women who are creating something, who are creating a business or chasing a goal or chasing a dream and how they've overcome obstacles and became unstoppable as that pro- in that process. They just haven't stopped. And so uh, I, I literally wanted to mirror my journey. And I, I wanted other women to know that they already have it within them. So when I, I started the first book, most of them were my coaching clients that are in the in the first book. And they realized that their message was one that mirrored mine, where there were pivotal moments in their life where they could have been stopped and they didn't. And they just kept going. And so their belief needle moved as a direct result of being part of the book. They just transformed because they realized that their message does matter. And, and most of their network and people who had been following them for some time, they had different conversations because people really truly understood who they were, what they were about and, and what their mission was about, like why they're doing what they're doing. So it's been such a um, transformational experience even for myself because to be able to fulfill part of my vision and then seeing other women transform in real time, it like I just get a buzz out of that. But I know that there's so much more to do. So it's a, it is a bit of a process and you know to, to be able to hold women's hand to, tr- to have them trust in themselves enough to share their message. But they've both both been such a huge success that I know that that is needed out there, that there is, some sort of desire from other women to see the possibility for them. So that's how it happened. That's why I started this podcast. I really want to share stories of exactly what you're just saying. And like we were just saying right before we got started, there are no coincidences that we're both on the same mission to really inspire and to help women just know every single one of us has a story and our misery can be our mission. And 
you, I really truly believe every single thing that we're going through right now, any challenge, anything that is hard, quote unquote, hard or challenging or things that are trying to stop us, they are the, the purpose for them. We might not know until later. Yep. But at some point it's going, you're going to be the perfect person to help someone else. And it's 100 percent, 100 percent, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, what, so what you're going through right now is going to serve you in time. You don't know that right now, but you will. You'll understand that everything that you're going through right now is going to serve you. It is. You just yeah. have to trust in that. And I say that to my clients, just trust in the fact that the uncomfortable process that you're going through right now, maybe in six months time, 12 months time, five years time, you'll look back and be proud of yourself that you did not quit. Yeah. Even something as a side note, just something is not, it's not trivial, but it didn't actually happen to me a year and a half ago. My husband had open heart surgery mm -hmm. and it was the, you know, the, the recovery and he's still not hundred percent. He's, it's been a very, very, very challenging year and a half and he's not hundred percent. He doesn't feel good. And I, I was like, man, I just, it's been so hard. You know, it's just been, every day is a challenge to get through. And a couple of weeks ago, my friend said, my dad's having open heart surgery on Monday. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay. So, and I was just like, what's going to happen? Standing her. I was just blowing up her phone. You got to look for this. You got to look for this. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. I didn't know any of this until I went through it. And so not only is, are your challenges going to serve you, it's yep. going to allow you to this serve somebody this. else. Yep. I'm helping her through this really super hard, challenging season and I told her a lot of the things I didn't know. Everything I didn't know, I do know now about open heart surgery. And so I can help her and her family and her mom, you know, who's ultimately going to be the bear, you know, going to be doing most of the work and the, and the caregiving. And they're all going to fly in and help. But I was like, don't leave your mom alone. <laughs> <laughs> you dare leave your mom alone. I was all alone. And that's okay. It's fine. But man go see her, you know, go be with her for a week or two, whatever you can. So, um, but I wouldn't have known that a year and a half ago. So it's just a little example of your point. That's, it's so true. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is so good. I cannot believe we've already talked for an hour. I could go another 10 hours, but um, <laughs> I'm so grateful. This is such great stuff. How can people find you? Oh, well, you, uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash Elsa B. Morgan. My website, elsamorgan.com. Um, I also have a free group uh, if anybody wants to be inspired as well. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash The Legacy Academy. I just, you know, train in there and put um, uh, quotes and it's, it's a bit of a community. But, um, but more than anything, my podcast that's like my jam at the moment, my, my, you know, that's why we, uh, which I relaunched recently called the consistency queen. And you can find that on Apple and Spotify and also my YouTube channel. And that's where my focus is to, to serve the most and to teach people how they can change their life like yourself one day at a time through consistency, which eventually compounds and you have this massive acceleration and so once, once people truly appreciate that, you're like, you won't stop. You won't miss a day. Nope. And even if you have the shittiest day ever, you just you get just, up and go do it again. Yes. I, just know. I just know. I just, just, just oh. keep going. Even if you yeah. have zero results for yeah. weeks and weeks and weeks or months and years at a time, keep going. that's a keep matter. Going. That's it. There's two of us here that are telling you this. <laughs> right. So just believe us. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. And it's the coolest part about it is that for our listeners, they didn't know this before we started recording, we did. I didn't even know she had a podcast called consistency queen. <laughs> It's so awesome. And I tell her that my podcast is create the life you want one day at a time. And she was just like, no way. There's no That's way. What I said, Wait, what? Consistency no. queen. I'm like, what? I didn't even know you had a podcast. So yeah. go listen to this podcast and go find her. I just, I'm so, ex I'm so excited. I'm so grateful for this awesome hour and so much wisdom and guidance. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Karen. And thank you to everybody. And just know that you can change your life. You can just like one little day at a time. That's Thank it. you, Elsa. Thanks so much.
Thank you listeners for being here and watching and listening. I really appreciate you for being here and supporting my show. And just remember that you can create the life that you want just one day at a time. God bless you.